this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, my name is JD and I was a 20 plus year drug addict and career criminal. Today I'm a recovery coach and I work in the recovery field to help other people get out of that lifestyle that I was stuck in for so long. As you might imagine, with 20 years in that lifestyle, I probably have some pretty cool fucking stories. And I like to tell them not only for educational purposes, consider these cautionary tales. Often in my videos, I ask people to give me video suggestions of what they would like to hear about and this was requested multiple times. First day in prison. But look, for those of you who do not understand how prison works, you are gonna go to an intake prison before they throw you on a real motherfucking yard. And intake prisons don't tend to be the most exciting places, although I do have a few cool stories that I do wanna tell about Coffee Creek in Oregon. What we're gonna get to right now is Snake River Correctional Facility, also known as Gladiator School. And why do they call it Gladiator School? I'm glad you asked, because it is a fucking buck wild, violent ass prison. It's located in scenic Ontario, Oregon, which is basically a tiny little shithole in the middle of the fucking desert. Nobody has family out there, nobody's getting any visits, and nobody has anything to fucking lose, and not a care in the world if they go to the hole or get more time for stabbing the fuck out of someone. But I knew exactly when I got on that transport bus where the fuck I was going, and I had heard the reputation of this fucking place, so I was expecting something, but I had no idea what the fuck I was actually in for. And my first day in prison turned out to be one of the better stories that I have out of the the entire 39 months that I served. Now, you might have seen the two and a half minute video that I did on this story on TikTok, or you might have even seen the lockdown 23 and one where he took my video from TikTok and he put it on YouTube and kind of did a play by play with it. But we're gonna get more in depth into this story. So even if you've heard it before, trust me, there's more going on in this one. Quick, before we get started, let me say that shit that I'm supposed to say that I don't really wanna say I need to anyway though. I'm not a fucking politician. I feel uncomfortable doing this, but please like, subscribe, comment, comment, share, whatever the fuck you do, make me feel special. Let's fucking go! So allow me to set the stage real quick. First off, me and my co-defendant were like best fucking friends. We had done a bunch of crime sprees together and we'd even gotten caught and taken fucking cases together before. This was just the first one that I actually went to prison for. He'd been to prison before, so he gave me the whole fucking rundown in county of exactly what I should do and shouldn't do, what I should expect. I didn't listen to any of his fucking advice, even though I knew he was right. I just did all the dumb shit anyway. But we were on the same fucking unit in county and when they shipped us to fucking prison, we went to cop Coffee Creek for intake. We were on the same fucking unit there. We rode that whole trip together and I was like, this is dope, man. I'm going to get to go to prison with my best friend. He's already been. This isn't going to be anything at all. It's going to be no fucking big deal. I fell at minimum fucking custody, man. I was expecting to stay right there in the valley close to home. That's what they did to everybody. But the day that they rolled us up and told us to get ready and get on those fucking buses, they called him too. And I'm like, cool, this is perfect. Then they told us to get into separate fucking lines. And I'm like, what the fuck? They've got him in one line down the hallway and me in another line down the hallway. And all of a sudden they tell him, yo, you're going to Sandy Am. Sandy Am is a decent ass minimum camp right there in Salem, Oregon. So it's not far from Eugene where we lived. Lots of visits, lots of action at tobacco, lots of action at drugs and anything else that you fucking want. It's a plush little spot to go to. Then they tell the other line, the line that I'm in, the line that I'm in, that we're going to Snake fucking River in Ontario, Oregon. It's fucking gladiator school. This is my first time in prison. I'm minimum fucking custody. The fuck you sending me to gladiator school for? <sighs> Later, my counselor told me that they wanted me to go to this Powder River drug treatment program. And it's like six months in intensive drug treatment and then three months fucking transitional leave where you're on the streets, but you're still like in transition and they can put you back in prison if you fuck up at all whatsoever. But it's like a pretty plush program. If you're doing 39 months and you can get out in nine fucking months, that sounds decent, right? All I had to do was keep my fucking nose out of trouble and I would be out in like nine months. I didn't do any of that. I did the exact fucking opposite. I fucked that shit up long before they could even find me a bed at Powder River. Yay! And yet I digress. So they've got us in this line. They put us on a bus. It takes like 13 fucking hours to get from one side of the state to the other. It shouldn't take that long. It's like a six hour drive. These people do not know how to transport people. It's a fucked up system. We should really take a look at that. So for those of you who are blessed enough to have never been on transport before, the first thing they do is they wrap a chain around your waist. The chain has like a padlock, but there's another chain that runs down to your feet shackles. Then they handcuff you. There's a little black box so you you can't move.
move your wrists too much in the handcuffs and they padlock that to your waist so you can't lift your hands any more than this so when they hand you fucking sack lunches you can't even get the sandwich to your fucking mouth it's like seriously sitting there trying to suck your own dick just to get a sandwich in your mouth like I can't reach! What the fuck? And they stop at several places so that you can go to the bathroom along the way, but they don't unchain you at all whatsoever, and you're in a white one-piece jumpsuit. So if you have to do anything more than try to piss without dribbling down the front of your jumpsuit, you're absolutely fucked. There is zero way that you can shit. We actually had a dude shit his pants on the transport bus and had to spend another seven hours just smelling that dude's fucking dookie. <sighs> Now, like a lot of people who've never been to prison, which I, this was my first time going to a real prison. I had no idea what I was really actually expecting. When we got there, we pulled up and yeah, there was fucking barbed wire everywhere, but it looked like a fucking college campus. It looked quite similar to the U of O, which I hung out at a lot and sold drugs. Long, clean hallways full of windows. There were gardens outside and all that shit. It looked and smelled sanitary. It looked like a halfway decent motherfucker. After they were done with my complimentary strip search and giving me some fucked up clothes and a little toothbrush and a little thing of toothpaste, a couple bars of soap, they walked my ass on down to my fucking unit, which was a long fucking walk, man. It was impressive how big this fucking facility was. I got on my unit and I knew a couple of the dudes on the unit already from being out on the streets doing crimes. And I asked them immediately, like, who's my fucking celly? Like, this was my main stressor in life right at that point. Who the fuck did they put me in a fucking cell with? Is he a chomo? Am I gonna have to peel his fucking wig back? And they're like, no, dude, he's actually a really good dude. He's older, he's mellow, he killed a couple cops, no big deal. He's like, doing a long time set here. You guys are gonna get along just fine. And I was like, all right, cool, I'm with that shit. He came back from work, I was in the cell, and they weren't wrong. The dude was super mellow, super calm, super respectful, like just a nice, tidy little fucking dude, man. And I asked him, what's up with your crime? And he's like, look, man, everybody says that I'm a fucking cop killer. It was vehicular manslaughter. I didn't even mean to do it, bro. But I was not a high-speed chase. I did crash into these cops, and they did die. So, like, I'm labeled a cop killer, and everybody respects me for that, but it wasn't like what you would think of a normal cop killer. And I was like word okay that's what's up he was getting ready for yard and i could not have been more fucking stoked i fucking got ready a couple dudes on the unit gave me everything that i needed they slid some fucking nikes on my feet right off they made sure that i had everything i needed sunglasses a fucking hat and we walked our happy asses out to that yard now the type of motherfucker that i am i observe everything. I am constantly surveying my environment. Situational awareness is important to me. I think it's a life skill that any fucking person should have. I want to know and see if something's coming long before it comes. So I'm checking people out. I'm checking out their body language. I'm seeing the way that they're fucking going back and forth with each other. And I'm kind of just getting my groove on how I want to proceed on this yard. Then I see these dudes, big tattooed dudes, walk up to this little ass dude, right? And this dude, this big motherfucker, looked kind of like me, more tattoos, starts poking this kid in the fucking chest. And I'm like, oh, I'm about to see something. I don't know what it is, but something's about to happen. Now, this big ass dude keeps throwing homophobic slurs at this little fucking dude, man. And this little dude, you can tell he's clenched up a bit and shit. And I'm like, look, this looks like it could be volatile. But he loosens up a little bit and he goes, you know what, man? All right, I'll fucking pay you. Puts his left hand out for a fucking handshake, right? Big dude grabs his fucking hand. When he grabs it, dude rips his fucking arm up and starts stabbing him right in the fucking armpit over and over again. The kid had clearly did his homework because he knew about the carotid artery, which lies up in the armpit. If your carotid artery gets severed, man, you have a matter of minutes to be in fucking surgery or you are going to bleed to fucking death, which is exactly what happened to this big ass dude out there on the yard. Cops started blowing fucking whistles. All of a sudden, this fucking alarm went off. Everyone around me is getting down on the ground. I'm like, fuck it. I guess we're getting down on the ground, huh? Now, I'm not quite sure if they just didn't do their homework on this kid or if they just thought he wasn't about shit, but it turns out this kid was there for brutally murdering both of his fucking parents with a knife. The word on the pound was that they were just fucking with him because they knew that he was gay, they knew that he was small, they thought that he was soft and an easy mark, he had somebody sending him money and they thought they were just going to peel that kid back for everything that he fucking had. And that's not how that shit worked out for them. 
I met a number of really, really savage motherfucking homosexual dudes in the fucking joint, bro. Them dudes are tired of your bullshit. They're tired of getting fucked with. They will fucking fight to the fucking knuckle if they have to. They literally do not give a fuck anymore. They're tired of the homophobic bullshit. And this dude found that out the hard way. It was the last lesson that he ever fucking learned in life. So I got to see the yard for all of five or ten minutes, and then we all got fucking sold the fuck back in and put on lockdown for fucking days stuck in that cell. It was fucking awful. I mean, the clear and obvious takeaway from this is don't go to prison. I'm sure 50 of you are going to fucking comment that on this fucking video. But the other thing that I want you to understand, man, is you never know who the fuck you're actually fucking with. Just because you have a preconceived notion that because this dude is gay, he ain't about shit, you are are fucked up bro you've got that shit all twisted up the cheat code to do an easy time is to conduct yourself with respect respect for yourself respect for others anything else is going to cause you static and drama and that shit's unfucking necessary it might cost you your fucking life like it did this fucking dude Anyway, as always, man, I appreciate everybody who wrote out this video with me. I appreciate your support. I appreciate the likes, the follows, the shares, the comments, man. If you've got any video suggestions, boom, this came from a video suggestion. So you know that I'm not bullshitting when I say I will put that shit on a list and get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate y'all, man. One love. Be good or be good at it. So